This video is designed to help you start a medical supply business. At the end of the video, you'll find a valuable gift. It's a medical supply business plan that you can download and will lay down for you, step by step, everything you need to know to start a successful medical supply business of your own. If you are new to this channel, make sure to hit the subscribe button for more videos like this. Market research is an important component of any business plan, and a major part of this is learning about your local competitors. Google Maps is a good place to start. Enter medical supplies as well as specific examples of supplies you may be interested in selling. Visit the company's websites to find out what they offer and, more importantly, what they don't. Once you know who your local competitors are, it's time to find out how many customers are in your region. This obviously depends on the types of equipment you plan to offer, but for most supplies, you should look for, hospitals, medical clinics, nursing homes and retirement homes veterinary clinics, nursing services and agencies. Again, Google Maps is probably the best place to start looking at your potential client base, although Bing Maps and Apple Maps are useful, too. Research the national market. Knowing your local market is a small piece of the larger picture. If you're planning to sell medical equipment online, the national market and international market are your virtual street corners. However, even if you plan to keep your business at the local level, Understanding the national market gives you insights that benefit you. The best way to get up to speed on the national medical supply market is usually to purchase an industry market report. The report gives you specific information, such as the average profit margins of medical supply companies, which companies dominate the market, how many companies there are, what the average profit margin is, and how revenue trends are looking. Speaking of trends, you also need to know the trends for the specific types of supplies you plan to sell. For example, if you are going to sell medical scrubs, you should know how often people purchase them, where they usually get them, and how much they cost. If you're planning to sell diabetes monitoring equipment, then you should know the technologies that are most popular now, and those that may be on the horizon. All of this type of information can be found in comprehensive market reports. Identify your target market. Medical supplies is a broad market, and it is impossible to be all things to all customers, particularly when your business is starting. It's important to narrow your target market to a precise niche, based on your research of available opportunities in your region, and gaps that the competition isn't focusing on. After you identify your primary market, look at additional supplies they may need. For example, suppose you decide to start with mobility products, like scooters, walkers and wheelchairs for seniors, who still live in their own homes. This could lead to pads and liners for incontinence and discreetly delivered personal care wipes. It could also open opportunities for safety bars and railings for their homes, especially if you can install them. Suppliers. Hand in hand with your target market is sourcing a supplier. Whether you're selling to hospitals, nursing homes or directly to consumers, pricing is going to be a factor to your customers. However, this doesn't mean you can afford to sacrifice quality for the sake of pricing. Contact manufacturers to find out what is needed to get an account. In some cases, you may be able to buy directly from the manufacturers while others refer you to a distributor. If you're planning on becoming a medical supply distributor yourself, you should have connections with a manufacturer, or have identified a new company offering a new product, that is looking for its first distributors, and is willing to give you an exclusive territory. It is easy to purchase cheap medical supplies from AliExpress in China. If this is your plan, make sure you order sample products, before buying them for your inventory, or drop shipping them to your clients. Look for reviews of the suppliers and contact the company to begin developing a solid relationship, so that if problems arise, your supplier is more likely to help you resolve the problem. The business side. As with any business, you need to register your business with your state and the IRS, as well as choose a business structure. In most cases, an LLC, limited liability company, may be the best option, since it gives you some personal protection in the event your business fails, or is subjected to lawsuits. Due to the risk of lawsuits, business insurance and liability insurance is especially important in the medical supply business. Pay particularly close attention to requirements the government has, for the storage and handling of your inventory. Your customers, especially hospitals, may have their own requirements for the shipment and handling of supplies, as well as specific quality control standards they need you to comply with. Talk to an accountant and a lawyer with experience in your industry before you open a shop. The next part of the video is not specific to a medical supply business. Nevertheless, this knowledge is essential for success in the medical supply business, as well as in any other business. Ignore it at your own peril. 
Operating a successful medical supply business will depend on the following four conventions. 1. A practical plan, with a solid foundation. 2. Dedication, and willingness to sacrifice, to reach a goal. 3. Technical skills. 4. Basic knowledge of management, finance, record keeping and market analysis. As a new owner, you will need to master these skills, and techniques, if your business is to be successful. Finding a niche. Small businesses range in size from a manufacturer, with many employees, and millions of dollars in equipment, to the lone window washer, with a bucket and a sponge. Obviously, the knowledge and skills, required for these two extremes, are far apart, but for success they have one thing in common. Each has found a business niche, and is filling it. The most critical problems you will face, in your early planning, will be to find your niche, and determine the feasibility of your idea. Get into the right business at the right time, is very good advice, but following that advice, may be difficult. Many entrepreneurs plunge into a business venture, so blinded by the dream, that they fail to thoroughly evaluate its potential. Is your business idea feasible? Before you invest time, effort, and money, the following exercise will help you separate sound ideas, from those bearing a high potential for failure. Identify and briefly describe, the business you plan to start. Identify the product or service, you plan to sell. Answering yes, to any of the following three questions, means you are on the right track. A negative answer, to all of them, means the road ahead could be rough. 1. Does your product or service, satisfy an unfilled need? 2. Will your product or service, serve an existing market, in which demand exceeds supply? 3. Will your product or service be competitive, based on its quality, selection, price, or location? Market Analysis for a small business to be successful, the owner must know the market. To learn the market, you must analyze it, a process that takes time and effort. You don't have to be a trained statistician, to analyze the marketplace, nor does the analysis have to be costly. Analyzing the market is a way to gather facts, about potential customers, and to determine the demand for your product or service. The more information you gather, the greater your chances of capturing a segment of the market. Know the market before investing your time and money in any business venture. The following questions, will help you collect the information necessary to analyze your market, and determine if your product or service will sell. This brief exercise will give you a good idea, of the kind of market planning you need to do. An answer of no, to any of the questions, indicates a weakness in your plan, so do your research, until you can answer each question with a yes. 1. Do you know who your customers will be? 2. Do you understand their needs and desires? Three. Do you know where they live? 4. Will you be offering the kind of products or services, that they will buy? 5. Will your prices be competitive, in quality and value? 6. Will your promotional program be effective? 7. Do you understand how your business compares with your competitors? 8. Will your business be conveniently located, for the people you plan to serve? 9. Will there be adequate parking facilities, for the people you plan to serve? Planning your startup. The following questions are grouped according to function. They are designed to help you prepare for opening day. Merchandise. Have you decided what items you will sell or produce, or what services you will provide? Have you made a merchandise plan, based upon estimated sales, to determine the amount of inventory you will need to control purchases? Have you found reliable suppliers, who will assist you in the startup? Have you compared the prices, quality, and credit terms, of suppliers? Business records. Are you prepared to maintain complete records, of sales, income and expenses, accounts payable, and receivables? Have you determined how to handle payroll records, tax reports, and payments? Do you know what financial reports, should be prepared, and how to prepare them? Finances. A large number of small businesses, fail each year. There are a number of reasons for these failures, but one of the main reasons is insufficient funds. Too many entrepreneurs try to start and operate a business, without sufficient capital, money. To avoid this dilemma, you can review your situation by analyzing the following three questions. 1. How much money do you have? 2. How much money will you need to start your business? 3. How much money will you need to stay in business? In order to answer the second question, how much money will you need to start your business? You need to prepare an estimate of all your startup costs. Here is a list of items, you may need to take into account. Note that this list is for a retail business. 
Items will vary for service, construction, manufacturing or online firms. Decorating and remodeling, fixtures and equipment, installing fixtures and equipment, services and supplies, beginning inventory cost, legal, professional fees, licenses and permits, telephone utility deposits, insurance, signs, advertising for opening, unanticipated expenses. Now, the answer to the third question, how much money will you need to stay in business? must be divided into two parts, immediate costs, and future costs. From the moment the door to your new business opens, a certain amount of income may come in. However, this income should not be projected in your operating expenses. You will need enough money available, to cover costs for at least the first three months of operation. The following list will help you project your operating expenses, on a monthly basis. Typical expenses for one month may include, your living costs, employee wages, rent, advertising, supplies, utilities, insurance, taxes, maintenance, delivery, transportation, miscellaneous. Now sum up the total estimated monthly expenses, and multiply it by 3, this is the amount of cash you will need, to cover operating expenses for 3 months. Deposit this amount in a savings account, before opening your business, use it only for those purposes listed in the above list because this money will ensure that you will be able to continue in business during the crucial early stages. By adding the total startup costs, to the total expenses for 3 months, you can learn what the estimated costs will be to start and operate your business for 3 months. By subtracting the totals of the lists from the cash available, you can determine the amount of additional financing you may need, if any. Now you will need to estimate your operating expenses for the first year after startup. The first step in determining your annual expenses, is to estimate your sales volume, month by month. Next, determine the cost of sales. You may want to use a spreadsheet to do this. After startup, the primary source of revenue in your business, will be from sales, but your sales will vary from month to month, because of seasonal patterns, and other factors. It is important to determine if your monthly sales will produce enough income to pay each month's bills. An estimated cash flow projection will show if the monthly cash balance, is going to be subject to such factors as the following, failure to recognize seasonal trends, excessive cash taken from the business, for living expenses, too rapid expansion, and slow collection of accounts, if credit is extended to customers. Conclusion If you have carefully answered all the questions in this video, you have seriously thought about your goal. However, there may be some things you may feel you need to know more about. Owning and running a medical supply business is a continuous learning process. Research your idea, and do as much as you can, yourself, but don't hesitate to seek help from people who can tell you what you need to know. As we conclude this video, it's time you get your free medical supply business plan gift. Go to the description below this video, to get it now. It is completely free, no strings attached. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please, like, and hit the subscribe button, for more videos like this.